I am glad and wonderful that I have seen you today. Amen? And also, don't forget to greet the mothers. Happy Mother's Day! Salamat sa ginoo, no? Sa ato ang... Salamat sa ginoo sa ato ang mga mama, no? Uh, Gibless ta sa ginoo. Once again, good morning. I am glad to see a lot of faces, no? Uh, San pag nakatabon ang ato ang mga mask, I believe that you are glad and happy and excited as we uh, together uh, enjoy the fellowship of believers. Amen? Um, this is a day that we look forward to every week, no? Uh, enjoying our brothers and sisters' presence. Uh, enjoying uh, worshiping together, praying unto the Lord, uh, listening and hearing the word of God, being equipped, no, pinagi sa yahanga messenger. And salamat sa ginoo that today is also a special day that we could celebrate the goodness of God through our, our mothers. No? As we prepare our hearts and minds um, into worship, one of the hindrances that we will um, we are not focused or kanang we are bothered in in our worship service is the presence of sin or the presence of thoughts uh, not focused unto God. So may I request everyone to please bow down their heads. Meditate upon the truth of God no? in 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 First John verse 1 and 9 is says in here, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. And this truth, you know, we ponder upon this truth. Although sometimes uh, we feel guilty uh, because of our sins, but if we focus on the truth that God has already washed away our sins, our past sins, our kanang future nga sins, no, we we are able to worship Him. Before we are not able to worship God, but because of the truth in the gospel, we can be confident that we are worthy. Uh, we are children of God, and we are worthy to worship Him. Now, in preparation, before we read our scripture reading. Um, in preparation for, for ourselves, uh, let us meditate upon this, this song, uh, Forgiven. Let this, be a, this, let this song be a prayer, a rebuke, a reminder, and a testimony for us that will give us the confidence to come into the Lord and altogether worship Him.
you wholeheartedly, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for dying on the cross. May I request everyone to please stand? For our scripture reading, please open your Bibles in the book of Isaiah 53. Let us read the whole chapter of Isaiah 53. Let us read it all together. Isaiah 53, verse 1 to 12. Who has believed what he has heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out, dry, out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their face, he was despised. And we esteem him not. Surely he has borne our grief and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteem him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. And as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. And they made his grave with the wicked and with the rich man in his death, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief. When his soul makes an offering for guilt, he shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hands. Out of the anguish of his soul, he shall see and be satisfied. And by his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous. And he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors, yet he bore the sin of many and made intercessions for their transgressors. Amen. One of the passages in the Bible that makes me reestablish how I see and look at the value and the worth of the sacrifice that happened in the gospel is Isaiah 53. This passage tells me of how deep was Christ's humility and how unreachable was his experience on that cross. Movies may depict, depict his physical pain, and some may copy, copy it during Lenten season, no? but we know it's a lot more than that. 
Imagine the emotional anguish that God has experienced, that Jesus has experienced. Now think of this situation. Consider yourself accused of a sin that you, that you did not commit. Like for example, you're accused of stealing. You know? How will you react or how will you respond unto it? I am sure that you will be restless and easy and for sure you could not sleep until it is resolved and you are justified. Right? Now imagine the Lord Jesus Christ. If we sinful and unrighteous feel that way, imagine Christ, sinless and pure. He was not just accused for his sin, for the sin he did not commit. He was punished and he took the penalty of it. And it is not just an accusation of simple sin, stealing or something, but it is the accusation and the punishment for the sins of the whole world. Imagine the unbearable emotional pain. One verse that kanang tells us this pain is in Matthew 27 verse 46 where Jesus cried out, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? There is so much more in that sacrifice. And these are only the things that we can comprehend. Christ's sacrifice displays the measure of God's love to us. God loved us that why God loved us that why that's why we were able to love him. And that is the reason why we are here now. We are made worthy to worship him. Amen. Shall we give a praise and, and a clap offering for God for the Lord for that? As we sing this song, let us express our gratitude and thankfulness for the Lord's love to us. Well, love, your Father has lavished on us that we should be called His sons and daughters, precious in world has never seen when he hung on the tree of life would he do such a thing for dirty sinners like you and me oh God thank you for loving me and on the cross he made to me Lord you died Let us sing it all together.
for loving me when on the cross he made history Lord you died for me forever my praise to God to thee oh God thank you for choosing me to be your child Let us continue to worship the Lord through this song. Yeah. 
clap offering. And amen. Salamat sa gino. Let us now all be seated. Good morning, everyone. This morning, we will be looking at various passages. But as a start, I would like to invite everyone uh, to open your Bible in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. Let us pause for a moment of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we continue to worship you and honor you for this wonderful day. Together as one big family, as a church, we humble down ourselves before you because we know, Lord, that apart from you, we can do nothing. But we thank you that your grace has always been uh, experienced in each of our lives. Daily, we have seen, oh God, how gracious you are, and we have experienced your mercy, that, that your mercies are indeed um, new every morning. Thank you, Lord, that you are so good to us despite our unfaithfulness. You remain faithful, oh God, to us. You are a loving Father, a caring Father, who really embraced us, uh, even, Lord, uh, in our uh, in, in times that we, we sin against you, you always forgive us as we come before you, as we confess our sins. You, you cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so there's nothing we can do to, to please you with our own self, but with Christ as our mediator, we have this confidence, oh God, that we can come before you. We can honor you. We can bless your name uh, because of what Christ has done on on the cross and so this morning it is by your grace oh god that we stand it is by your grace that we come before your most holy presence and receive instruction from your word and so we ask that your holy spirit will just speak to us uh, in a way lord that is uh, transforming sa among tagsatag sa ka mga kinabuhi and salamat kay lord nga ang matag usa jud karon nga day will really be blessed nga mugawas diri aning uh, panagtigom puno gyud sa imong espirituhanon nga nga panalangin. And so whatever things that we will achieve this morning, again, we are careful, O Lord, to give you all the glory that you deserve in Jesus name. Amen. Once again, good morning. Today is a, a special a special day because it is a Mother's Day, no? Special. And I would like to to, to greet no, our mothers who are here this morning. A happy Mother's Day. Lingi daw ng mga mothers na to din ha. Dugangan lang po siguro nako. A happy Wives and Mother's Day. <laughs> Salamat kayo sa, sa gino. I believe katong nga mga pulong, no, those words are not enough to really appreciate and thank you for all the sacrifices that you have made sa, 
sa inyong mga sa inyong tagsa-tagsa ka mga families, no? But at, accept this, no, from the bottom of our hearts on behalf of all the children who are here this morning. Happy Mother's Day. No? So mga children, children maditang tanan, no? <laughs> Just this morning I, I greeted my my mother and uh, we we talked and then I, I thank her for the, the life that she uh, gave to, to serve us you know, when we were just kids. And that was very memorable. <laughs> so every time I, I, I think of my mother, of my father, how they brought us up as children to know God in our lives. Nothing can compare no with that with that joy nga naasa ko ang kasing-kasing and I believe sa ato apo tag sa tagsa no? to reflect how God has been good to us for giving us parents no? who really raise up no? so we're so thankful for them mo na nga to say thank you I know it's not enough to really appreciate and honor our parents of this wonderful uh, day where we can celebrate them as our mothers. You know? So once again, a happy uh, Mother's Day you know, to, to all the, the mothers. Now, this morning, we're not going to have a, uh, we're going to have a break you know, sa ato ang series and I'm going to preach on the subject of biblical motherhood. And this is why I entitled this morning's message, A Mother After God's Own Heart. Now, it has been said that nothing beats the love of a mother. Tinood ba ni? Nothing beats the love of a mother. But I would say, nothing beats the influence of a godly mother. I believe that it is equally true. No? In fact, kung imong tanawon sa Old Testament, the way God presented His love you know, for His people Israel, He compares it to the mother. No? Siya, Can a mother forget the, the young ones in his uh, womb? No? Even if she forgets, I will never forget you. So kung naa man gani siguro itaw kinaulahian nga makalimot sa ato ah atong mama na kung makalimot sila no? pero ang di jud makalimot ang atong Ginoo amen So mo na nga nothing beats the love of a mother and nothing beats the influence of a godly mother G Campbell Morgan a profound British preacher whose four sons no all became pastors uh he really influenced millions of people through his writings, preaching, and, and teaching. And one day, uh, his young son, Howard, after he finished preaching, a kanang big interview, no? Ni asa iha a question. Now, since you have five uh, uh, pastors in your family, who's the greatest preacher? And of course, uh, ang nangutana siya, nag-expect that Howard will honor his father, but then Howard surprised the, the one who asked, my mother. Tinood ba ni sa balay? Just this morning, nakatilaw ko og ka ng sermon sa ko ang wife. <laughs> to focus, focus. <laughs> uh, usahay, napakoy lang yung buhaton. O niya, ang oras po, hapit na. So, si told me nga kuan diritso na no kung asa ko dapit padulong so those are kuan kanang things nga helpful kay sa ato ang life but i believe tinuod ni siya no even sa ako ang life uh, although akong mama dili mo wali sa simbahan pero ang ihang preaching every day no dako kayo og impact sa ako ang kinabuhi no so mo na nga kung naay greatest nga preacher sa balay ato nang mga mama and so children thank them <laughs> no? So, pero sakit hunahunaon, often times we forget about or we do not realize 
that a mother's love, concern, and teaching are far, far more uh, influential on people than anything else. No? Mothers are an integral part no, of our lives. We, we do not become what we are right now if not for the instrumentality of our mothers. And of course, our fathers, pasensya na fathers, it's Mother's Day. No? We'll focus on the mother. <laughs> no? So, the influence of the mother, no? walay makalabaw yun din nana. And of course, this is supported no? when we talk about testimonies of the greatest people in, in history. No? Uh, George Washington, ning declares siya about saying, Mother, all I am, I owe to my mother. No? He's the first U.S. president. Andrew Jackson, ingon siya, there never was a man like her. She was gentle as a dove, a brave as a lioness. The memory of my mother and her teachings were, after all, the only capital I had to start life with. And on that capital, I have made my way. Another great person, si Charles Haddon Spurgeon, no? the prince of preacher. Ingon siya, I cannot tell you how much I owe to the solemn word of my good mother. And then Napoleon Bonaparte, ingon siya, the future destiny of a child is always the work of the mother. So inana ka kanang nindot no ang experience nila with their mothers, and I believe all of us here can attest to that. Uh, several years ago, I came across a statement no that uh, that says about the importance of the mothers, and it says. At a pastoral conference at which one, about 120 American clergymen united in the bonds of a common faith were assembled, each was invited to state the human instrumentality to which under the divine blessing he attributed the, a change of heart. Out of the 120 clergymen, above 100 gave the honor to their mothers. So truly, no, the role of a mother is very important. And we all know that mothers are known for giving so much to their families. The sacrifice, no, a lot of time, energy to make sure that all are provided for and that the children are brought up correctly. Pero my question this morning, my dear brothers and sisters, how many of the mothers of today are carrying out the mothering task with love and dignity. How many of the mothers of today are carrying out the mothering task with love and dignity? Now, personally, I have such a high esteem for the office of motherhood. And that's the reason why I always love to talk about motherhood. I'm not a mother, but when we talk about teaching, no, the teaching, the principle about motherhood, I love it. Why? Because I have such a high esteem for that office. Not because of the mothers, but because it is God who designed it. Amen. Think about this. What could be more important than to be God's instrument in the forming of the human soul? Unang karun nga buntag, my dear brothers and sisters, I would really love to to emphasize God's highest calling for women. And I understand that this is, a, uh, this is count something counter-cultural. In fact, I will not be surprised if many people would, would, would hate me you know, after this sermon. But never, nevertheless, you know, I would preach on the subject of biblical motherhood for the sake of the women and for the sake of the children who will benefit from them. Now, I have five objectives in this sermon para akong maklaro kung unsang atong objective ani. Number one is to be able to glorify God in His grand design for motherhood. Kay balo man tang uh, karon nga times atong culture opposed na good kayo sa kanang design of purposes sa, sa ginoo. So it's very important for us to really understand no, that motherhood is not for uh, mothers who have nothing to do in life. Uh, motherhood is a calling. And number two, to be able to encourage the FCF women to make better decisions in a season of life. And so in this sermon, I would like, no, it is really my, my prayer that we will all understand that focusing on our children, especially in their formative years, is but for a season. Uh, 
and you don't want to miss that opportunity. Number three, to be able to challenge the FCF men to make their home a place where women can be women. Motherhood is not apart from the calling of God for men. It is working hand in hand with what God has called for men. That is why, although the topic is about motherhood, it is very important for the men you know, to understand motherhood and encourage it. Number four, to be able to admonish the children to honor their parents, especially their mothers. So, young people, to honor our mother is not a once-a-year event. It should be a day-to-day -day, uh, event. No? Nga atong i-honor ang nga atong mga, mga mothers. And so, for all of us who are still under no, the, the authority of our parents, this is our number one responsibility in the family, to honor our parents, and especially our mothers. Number five, to be able to show the importance of motherhood in the overall calling of the church to disciple the next generation. So by the grace of God, those are the uh, objectives, no? specific object objectives that uh, we desire to accomplish in this sermon. So it is my prayer nga atong i-align nga atong tagsa-tagsa ka mga kasing-kasing to what God wants to accomplish in our lives. Amen? So let's learn and live. Now, ina doon inyong tapad be. Let's learn from the Word of God and live according to them. Okay, the purpose nga nung magsigitag pamina og sermon because we don't know anything or all things about the Word of God. We need to be instructed, we need to be reminded, especially that we are prone to forgetfulness. We need to be instructed from the Word of God. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, one of the the greatest enemies no, in our Christian life is actually ignorance. And in fact, the Bible says in Hosea 4.6 that my people are destroyed because of the lack of knowledge. So, manang crucial kayo ang understanding. And when we talk about homes, no, most of the problems of the home are actually a result of not being able to to follow God's wonderful design for the family. So many people think they are better than God, and so they make their own structure you know, for the family, and only to find, out, to find out that they are going against the will of God, and it affects the effectiveness of the family. And so this morning, let's talk about biblical manhood. You know? What is biblical manhood, uh, womanhood? Now, biblical womanhood is a God-given calling for mothers to lovingly care for their children and to provide for them a biblical instruction and genuine godly example so that they may receive and reflect the gospel. Okay? Biblical motherhood is a God-given calling for mothers to lovingly care for their children and to provide for them a biblical instruction and genuine godly example so that they may receive and reflect the gospel. Now, out of that definition comes the portrait of a mother after God's own heart. And we are going to look at those things, no, sa atong definitions, and then let's look at the Bible if it is consistent. No? Ang ato ang definition nga naa din na nga, nga buntag. So let's take a look at what a mother God's own heart look like. No? So the portrait of a mother after God's own heart. Number one, she regards motherhood as a God-given call. She regards motherhood as a God-given call. Now, mothers did not end up as mothers by chance. Amen? Amen, Batana? Siguro na ay na, nasipyat when it comes to kanagingo na to uh, unwanted. No? Yan na mother ka. Pero the design of God for motherhood is not by chance. No? God has designed mothers to carry out the role of mothering. 
And this is implied in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, 28. And the Word of God says, So God created man in His own image. In the image of God created He Him. Male and female created He them. Now, why create a female? Why not create another male? Why create a female? Now, I believe it is for the purpose of childbearing. That God created another creature comparable to the man, but unique in her design and roles. And that is why in verse 28, makita na to din ha, be fruitful and multiplying. How? Through childbearing. And so motherhood was God's idea. It is not a human idea. That is why human, human being has no right no, to change the definition of being a mother. It is God's idea. Now as Christians, do we believe that? Now, if we believe that, then we should not treat mothering as a second-class ministry of the church. Amen? Mothering is an integral part of the overall ministry of the church. And there are a lot of passages in Scripture to take this to heart. But allow me to give you just one. Katong gibasa na to, ganina. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Naingon ang pulong sa ginoo, Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. Now, notice, if you notice anang apasis din ha, Paul connects, she shall be saved with childbearing. Now, ang word din ha, ang childbearing actually comes from the Greek word technogonia and it literally means motherhood. And by implication, the performance of maternal duties, according to uh, Strong, no, a Greek uh, uh, definition. So, the question nato diri karon is, she shall be saved from what? Kaya sa childbearing. So she shall be saved from what? Well, if you consider the previous verses, makita nato diri ang naay argument si Paul. Why a woman, or particularly a wife, should be in submission to the man? And the first reason is in verse 13. For Adam, word 4, assigned as yeah, for Adam was, formed, uh, was first formed, then Eve. And so the first reason why a woman should be in submission to the man is the order of creation. And the second reason is the fall. That's why if you look at verse 14, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in transgression. So, ato nga di discuss in the past. No? Dili ni nga na inani tatungod sa sala sa babae. In fact, kung imong tanawan, ang summary to the human race, ang sala, gibutang sa accountability ni Adam. Okay? Pero ang statement diri and Adam was not deceived but the woman being deceived was in transgression. So truly the woman was deceived but Adam was not deceived. He sinned deliberately. But not, that is not the 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 purpose of our uh, kanang sermon karon nga buntag pero atong tan-awon diri the fall with all its consequences harmful to the woman did not actually arise from her being in submission to the man. In other words, ang misery sa woman is not because God has ordained that, he, that she should be in submission to her husband. That's not the reason. In fact, the opposite is the case. The reason why woman is in misery as a result of the fall is because she abandoned her role of submission to Adam and decided to take the matters into his own hands. And that's what happened. The fall happened. Or the, the, the fall came. So it is in this context that Paul says, Nevertheless, she shall be saved in childbearing. And so the word save, although from the word zuzo, has nothing to do with remission of sins or salvation from the penalty of sin. Saved here means deliverance out 
of sin-related suffering and oppression. In other words, the woman will conquer and arise from the misery and curse of the fall. How? Kay mama ni ang bot ipasabot ni Paul. In what way, man, nga ang woman will conquer and arise from the misery and curse of the fall? It's not by joining feminism. It's not by demanding equality over roles in the partnership of marriage. No. That approach only institutionalizes the rebellion no? against God-given place. Kung imong tanawang diri sa statement di Paul, her path to deliverance from that sin-related suffering and oppression was actually ordained by God. It comes through childbearing. It comes through motherhood. And that's what the statement, she shall be saved through childbirth means. We all know that the first gospel promise was given before any curse was pronounced. Kung mubalik ta sa Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, makita na to din ha ang nindot kayo nga promise sa ginoo that involves motherhood. Look at Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. This is the message of God's grace. The one means that was mentioned for the course of salvation was childbearing. Now, wala ang word ka childbearing, but it is implied there. Deliverance comes not through man's vocational effort, but through woman's childbearing. And of course, when we talk about Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, the focus there is our Lord Jesus Christ. But then, dili na to mawala ang fact that raising a godly generation is also vital to the cause of God in the world. My dear brothers and sisters, it is to the woman, not man, that God assigned this high calling. Now, this is not, it does not mean that man has nothing to do with raising kids. Uh, spiritual leadership actually belongs to the man, but childbearing belongs to the woman. Today, many women so eager to abandon mere motherhood to duplicate man's calling. And this should not be in the Christian community. The Bible tells us that we are the pillar, the ground of the truth. In 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, in other words, the church should be demonstrating the truth of God, not maligning it. When we don't fulfill our God-given call, in a sense, the word of God is blaspheme. That's why if you look at Titus and Timothy, Paul has a lot of instructions and it would end that the word of God will not be blasphemed. That the doctrine of God our Savior will not be blasphemed. Because everything about the instruction of God has something to do with how we portray the gospel of Christ. Again, the church should be demonstrating the truth of God, not maligning it. The Word of God should be demonstrated in the lives of His people. When the unbeliever sees that the married life of the Christians are not doing well, how would that affect to the gospel? The Bible says that there is that institution, sacred institution of marriage, and then they would look at the lives of the Christians and they would not see the sacred institution of God in their lives. So what happened? The Word of God is not true. When the Christian children do not obey their parents, what would the unbelievers uh, say? The Bible says, Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. And then the Christians are not obeying their parents. That is an insult to the Word of God. And so as Christians we should be demonstrating the truth of God in, in our lives. We should be making a difference you know, to the world. 
And so when it comes to motherhood, this low view of the high calling of motherhood is damaging to the church. That is why we should take God's design you know, at face value. Motherhood is not a habit, but motherhood is a calling. Amen? It is a calling. Wala lang ni nga, No. It is a calling. Now, mothering is not limited to the home. And if you are a woman and you don't have children or your children are no longer with you, the call to motherhood still stands. Kung imong tanawan ang Titus 2 mandate, it is about motherhood, a spiritual motherhood. So you are called by God to mother, to mentor, and nurture those young women who have no spiritual mother. So it starts in the home, but it is not limited to the home. Amen? Amen ba? So dili nga na human ang kakaroon sa pag-mentor sa imuhang mga bata, and then nang lakaw na sila, and they have been enjoying and, you know, being successful in the service of God. So wala na ko ibuhato, No. You still have the family of believers. And there are a lot of young women who have no spiritual mothers. And they need you. They need you. That's what Titus 2 mandate is, is about. Again, it starts in the home but not limited to the home. And so, the greatest, the greatest but not the only contribution no, of the mothers in the church and society comes in motherhood. The greatest, again ladies, your greatest but not the only contribution to the church and society comes in motherhood. And as we have seen, motherhood is about God. It is about God that His will and purpose might be passed on to the next generation. Now, point number two, she provides biblical instruction and genuine godly example. So, motherhood is not only a calling, but within that calling, motherhood involves both teaching and training. So, when the Bible says childbearing, it means more than just the process of conceiving and carrying a child in the womb. It is more than that. Mothering task is assumed. So mothering does not mean having a child only to send him off no, as soon as possible to a daycare center. That's not what motherhood is about in the Bible. Of course, at times, this is essential for survival, especially for single mother. And we really appreciate them for really doing their best you know, to do both, especially a walay partner. You know, or for those women who have husband nga incapable of doing the thing that God has called them to do, there is, this is really a struggle. So, ganina ang story ni Ati Benji. It's the ideal. So, ang opposed, opposite ani is not the ideal. But I know God's grace will abound for those people no, na wala sa ideal, kung imong tanawan. The Lord's grace will, will abound. Pero again, as a mother, apil ang mga father ani, pero wala lang sa lagi ang father. <laughs> The principle no, still serves the father. So, huna -huna na lang father, if you're listening to, the, to this uh, sermon, it's not only for the mothers. No, the principle is also for the, the fathers. And so, I hope na when we look at motherhood, although na mga times good, that we would entrust our kids to, to other people, Kung kinahanglan yun for survival. But it is my prayer that we would carefully examine our hearts when we do that. 
that it is not a result of selfish interest in our own career or in acquiring more wealth. Because sometimes, even if capable, isaray mag, mag, manginabuhi, we still have the temptation to leave our kids for the purpose nga mas mutaas pag yun ato ang lifestyle. And then, at the cost sa mga bata nga gagmay pa. Now, ako nang ipasabot og maya because a lot of people will think of me that the, the responsibility of the women are only in the home. That is not true. If you look at Proverbs 31 woman, he goes outside the home, he sells land, he, he bought land and then he sells it. So about sa business. No? Pero that is not a one-time season sa life o sa kababay. It is the whole of his life, of her life. So there are times that your children are so dependent on you that you need to really focus on that baby because that baby needs you. That is why in that moment, kinhanglan ka mo make a decision. Ano man? Are you going to sacrifice the most important calling in your life and then go to other thing? Or kinhanglan sa ka for a season of your life? Because it is not the whole of life. It is for a season. Of course, there are, there are exemptions to this. Akong gisulti pag na. When we talk about single mothers or single parents, Lisod kayo ni Buhaton. Pero I know the grace of God will abound and will give us wisdom na both of this dili na to masacrifice. The Lord is gracious. I believe that. In fact, if you look at 1 Timothy and you study chapter 5, the Lord is gracious. There are a lot of principles there, but I will not go there. Ang ato diriya is, we need to examine, even as fathers, why I should go outside the country and, and leave the home no, to work. So, tanaw na ko akong kasing-kasing. Basin niya, og dili na jud ni for the glory of God and for the sake of my family. Ano man, because there are things that will be sacrificed more important than money. And we all know that, you know, the Lord will provide our needs. Now, I say this with, with concern in my heart because I have seen a lot of families breaks because of the pursuit for money. That is why one of the things that we should think about this sermon is to really seek God and ask for wisdom in our decision making. If we are honoring Him in our God-given calling. Now, if you look at 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, again, this is assumed. Look at the last part. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if and they, and that word they there does not refer to the woman because the woman is referred to as she. So if they, obviously referring to the children as a result of the mothering ministry of the woman, the she. If they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. Motherhood involves the training of a faithful mother. And this involves both verbal instruction and modeling. Look at the, the passage in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 20 23. And she, My son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mothers. It, is, it refers to verbal instruction. Bind them continually upon thine heart and tie them about thy neck. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou sleep, it shall keep thee. And when thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. For the commandment is a lamb, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Look at the importance of God's word. No? Look at the importance of, 
uh, look at the importance that the Word of God is giving to the mother's teaching. Kina importantihan kayo. Children are told to bind a mother's teaching upon their hearts and to fasten them around their necks. So, gibalyo og maayo sa ginoo, sa pulong sa ginoo, ang teaching sa mother. Look at the verse. Tanaw na to ang effect no, sa teaching sa mother. Ingon siya din For the commandment, when thou goest, it shall lead thee, when thou sleepest, it shall keep thee, and when thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. In other words, the teaching of the mother will guide us when we walk, it will guide us when we sleep, and when we are awake, it will serve us all circumstances in life. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, no amount of youth fellowship or no amount of Sunday school church seminars can replace the power of a mother's teaching. And I'm saddened by the fact that there are parents nowadays have neglected this responsibility in bringing their children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Sunday schools are good, but they are just extra education for your children. It's not the main. So do not think that discipleship happens in the church. Kung natay gipang buhat during a discipleship, it is supplementary with what we are already doing every day in the, the family. So it's the primary responsibility of the parents to teach and train their children. Now, I will never forget the, the, the teachings and pieces of training that I have with my, my parents. Although sa una, mura o kuwan pa kayo sa kuwa ka na ditang mura kag, ah, naanapod ang words sa ginoo. No? Every time na ay instruction, relate per minute sa word of God. So before we sleep, we have our memory verse. And then when we wake up early in the morning, we have our family devotion. And when I look at that no? from here, it's really good. Although at that time, maghilak-hilak yun me. Kung mo mata, kaya usahe kung di mo mata, bubuag tubig. <laughs> Para makamata. Pero we really appreciate that. Because kung wala to siya, I don't know what kind of foundation would I have. No? Coming out from my parents and going to another place to live my life. A mother must be reminded that her teaching has power. It has God's stamp on it, and it has God's authority backing it up. That's why mothers continue to, to teach your children. Let us continue no, to teach our, to train our children, exercising no, your faith towards God that He is using you in their lives. There are times really that I will just sit down and look at Joan. May mga times nga pakailak, pakailak na siya. It's not easy. Pero the moment he overcomes those things, it's really the grace of God working in and through her life. And I'm just looking at what would that be in the life of my children. Maybe sa karon siguro, many mothers would look at this as suffering. But take heart. God has called you in that calling and He is the one who will enable you to fulfill that calling. Amen? Do not lose heart. You will just reap a harvest later on because God is faithful. Of course, this is not a, a promise nga kung ato ni buhaton tanan apart from the, the response of our children. But we know that when we form a habit, habit is very powerful. 
And when it comes to the Word of God, it is the responsibility, our responsibility to instruct them with the Word of God, but it's the power of the Holy Spirit working in their hearts. We'll just do our responsibility. And with the mothers, I encourage you, continue. Just continue reading aloud the Scriptures, you know, spending time with your, with your kids. And you will never know the Lord is already working in their lives. And in the Bible, we have a very good example in the life of Grandma Louise, you know, Mamila Louise, and Mommy Eunice. If you look at Second Timothy, it is a good example to start early when it comes to instruction. They taught the Holy Scripture to Timothy even as an infant. And so as mothers, we can follow their example. Let us not underestimate nga di pa man sila kasabot. No? So di sa kuana, unya na pag magdagko na sila. No. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. 14 and 15. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom that whom there refers to her mother and grandmother. The whom thou hast learned them. And yet 15, and that from the child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Now interestingly, the term child in the Greek is briefos. It refers to an infant. Or unborn baby. So possibly, na diri sa womb. And I think there is a study, if you heard that, nga kung magpatukar ka o kuan, muriak na ang mga bata diri sa ilalom pa. So it's possible that Timothy, while in the mother's womb, basahan na siya scripture. Or ibutang na to, bago siyang panganak, basahan na siya scripture. Ang mga naging niya, from infancy, no, sa other nga translation, Thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. And so that's what they're doing. And that's a good example for us to follow. Amen? So let us read aloud the scripture to our children. Let us teach them you know, the scripture. Bisagag may pa. Wata kay balo kung asa sila dapit. Pero the words that you have spoken to them, no, develop na sa ilahang mind. Now, not only that, sa gibuhat ni Eunice o ni, ni Lois, they also, not only sa verbal ng instruction, but they also models the Christian faith to their children. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, I am persuaded that in thee also. Now look at the, the beautiful picture of the transfer of faith put on display in nga, nga verse. Gikan kang grandmother Louise and then kang mother Eunice Louise. Ba'y pagbasa na, Louise? And then to mother Eunice and then to son Timothy. It started with Mamila. So naagi hapon ang ministry sa Mamila. Bisag ng lahi ng family ang mga anak. In fact, na anang giingon po karon uh, apostolic ministry. Pero what can we see here? The faith that started from Grandmother Lois is passed on to the third generation or second generation. Based lang diri. Pero I believe, kang Timothy, Sa sunod po sa mga ipang disciple nila, that's another generation. So this is a powerful uh, picture, no? of a godly example on the lives of another. So nakita ni Timothy ang gospel through sa life sa iyang mama, through sa life sa iyang grandmother, and it had a transforming effect sa iyang life. Nga I believe when they share the gospel to Timothy, wala gitabunan ni Timothy yung dalunggan. Mm. Nga naman, nakita nila ang life sa ilahang mga ginikanan. And so their genuine godly examples were means of grace 
that the gospel was adorned in the eyes of Timothy. My dear brothers and sisters, we should try to live no, in such a way that makes the gospel attractive to our children. And for the mother's mother must model that God's grace is big enough to cover the effect of our sin in the lives of the children. There's nothing more important no, a mother can give to her children than the gift of a godly example. And we have seen this principle in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6 to 7, as instructed to the house of Israel, and these words which I command thee, this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Of course, sa parenting ni, no, sa tanan. But the focus nato karon is uh, motherhood. It's not only for the father, but it's also for the, the mother to give an authentic, genuine example of the Christian life. And so when we spend time with them, we share the word of God. When we spend time with them, we model the scripture to them so that they will see the gospel and our lives being consistent. And I believe that has a, a transforming, you know, powerful transforming effect sa life sa ito ang mga bata. And if you are a mother who have daughters, I believe Titus 2, chapter 2, verse 3 to 5, no, is a good passage to teach. The aged women likewise that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accuser, not given too much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keep, keepers of, at home, good, obedient to their own husband. What's the purpose? That the word of God be not blasphemed. It means to say that you are going to disciple the, your daughters on, on how to love their husband, future husband, that they are going to love their future children, and on how to be self-controlled, pure, busy at home, kind, and submissive. Because it adorns the gospel. So this is not legalism. This is, this is not something legalistic. It has something to do with how we conform to the gospel that we have received by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. These are the things mothers need to be teaching to your daughters and must not neglect this very important instruction because it affects the gospel. Now, I believe this is the authority of God's word. And when this principle is obeyed, I know God will work mightily in each of our lives. Number three, she has a tender love for her children. Now, in the scripture, we are given a picture of a mother's love being tender, gentle, comforting, and compassionate. Now, let's read the following uh, passages. 1 Thessalonians 2, 6, 8. Nor of men sought we glory, neither of you nor yet of others, when we might have been burdensome as the apostle of Christ, but we were gentle among you. Paul is talking about discipleship, how he, he discipled no, these believers in Thessalonica, but then he compares it with the way mothers do it sa ilahang children. Tanawa. But we were gentle among you even as a nurse. That's referring to a mother as a nourisher. Cherisheth her children. So a, a gentle love for those whom God has entrusted to our care. Isaiah 49, 15, Can a woman forget her sucking child that she should not be, have compassion on the son or her womb? Yea, they may forget, yet will I not forget. As on the part of God, it's comparing his uh, treatment sa iyang people Israel with, with the mothers. Isaiah 66, 13, As one whom his mother comforteth, so will I comfort you, and ye shall be comforted in Jerusalem. Titus 2, 4, That they meet the young women to be sober, to love their husband, to love their children. And interestingly, that word love is not referring to agape, because for the most part, I think, in general, 
It is the strength of the women to really love sacrificially. But here, the word love that is used is not agape, but it's the word phileo, and it means tender, affectionate, and warm, caring. Because there are times nga ang mga mama, sacrificial yun kayo, bisag badlungon ang mga anak, badlungon ang mga husbands. Serve, bragi hapon. Pero sige, nagbagot-bot. Wala na joy. And I think generally, mauni ang weakness. Nagtrabaho to all, pero wala na. No? Wala na ang joy, ang love, loving, gentle, caring towards a giserban. And so this is the instruction for them, to love their children. In fact, to love their husband, the same word, nagigamit, phileo, means tender, affectionate, and warm, caring. So all of mother's conduct before her children, and all the training for her children should be marked by this tender love. My dear brothers and sisters, I believe this tender, affectionate kind of love for children is the grand secret of an effective example of training. Ano man, kay mauni ang principal pod. Kung imong tanahon, paunsa ta, ning humble down sa ato ang self, or paunsa ta na apiktuhan sa gugma sa ginoo, is through His kindness. If you look at Romans chapter 2, verse 4, ang sagisulti sa pulong din ha, Makita nato din ha, ang affectionate nga love is actually the love that wins koan kanang that 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 wins through no sa ato ang heart when we look at the love of God on the cross no? tanawa or despises thou the riches of his goodness referring to kindness and forbearance and long suffering not knowing that the goodness no the kindness of God leadeth thee to repentance morning nay kanta it's your kindness that leads us to repentance, O oh Lord. It's the kindness. It's our desire nga atong mga bata mo repent. Pero kung ato silang pakitan sa ato ang kinadragonan nga tingog, basin niya ino, ano, dili na ino sila mo repent. So let's use the principle, kindness. So a woman after God's own heart has a tender love, or a mother after God's own heart has a tender love for her children. And not only that, she prays for her children. In front of them, behind their backs, he prays for them, for their salvation. She prays for them, for their closeness to God. I could still remember you know, those times when my mother laid his hands on me in prayer. I was actually a very problematic child, a hopeless child. I saw things we don't normally see. I was at constantly koan kanang. I was suffering from asthma, parihaning jan jan. During in my early koan kanang childhood na ko. And my mother almost koan lost her hope, no, for me. Okay. Sa iya pang pagsulti na ako, mura na, mura na akong mamatay. <laughs> Bisag unsa ng tambal. Sige na kong syagit dito sa center, kitagko, keng dagom, ibang tusok sa akong lubot. Hopeless. But then one day, my mother prayed for me. A very intense prayer that God will intervene in my sickness. And she personally dedicated my life to the Lord as her child, as, a, as her son. In fact, when I told my parents that for, uh, for, uh, for God's kind of calling sa ako ang life, although now that three times di sila musagot, that was the moment that I used to, to persuade my parents. Remember, mom? Mamo man, remember Mamo? You dedicated my life. Imo kong interest sa Ginoo. Imo na kong gi-commit sa Ginoo for service. And so that's the one thing, no, that really softened their heart in my decision to go to pastoral ministry. And I really love them for supporting me in my calling because they're the ones who taught me to love the Lord 
more than anything else in, in my life. And you know, every time I think about my mother, I can remember Hannah. If you remember Hannah, a woman of grace, that's what her, her name means in the Old Testament. She said in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 26, 28, and she said, Oh my Lord, as thou so liveth, my Lord, I am a woman that stood by thee here, praying unto the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord hath given me my petition when I ask of him. Therefore also I have lent, sa uban nga translation, dedicated him to the Lord. As long as he liveth, he shall be dedicated or lent to the Lord. And he worshiped the Lord there. A mother after God's own heart, prays for her children. And you know, we thank the Lord for giving us mothers here in FCF who really prays for their children, who really prays for them, their salvation, and for their closeness to God, that they would love the Lord, and that they would love His Word more and more and more than anything else in this world. I always bless, I am always blessed to hear parents who have expressed their desire for their children who gives concern for their children, pray for my ch children, for my son, for my daughter. It really shows how much they, they love you, children. And we're so blessed to have that here in Family Christian Fellowship. Mothers after God's own, own heart. And so it's my desire and prayer for all of us, especially for the mothers, just continue praying for your, your children. Lastly, a mother after God's own heart has an internal, eternal goal. Mothers, this is the thought that you should be principal, that should be principal on your mind in all you do for your children. This should be the motivation. Now, I have a book, actually a book, entitled The Duties of Parents, Parenting Your Children God's Way by John Charles Ryle, and speaking of training our children with an eternal, eternal goal, this is what he said. How will this affect their souls? Soul love is the soul of all love. To pet and pamper and indulge your child as if this world was all he had to look to, and this life the only season for happiness, is not true love but cruelty. It is treating him like some beast of the earth, which has but one world to enjoy and nothing after death. It is hiding from him the grand truth which he should learn about from his very infancy, that the chief end of his life is the salvation of his soul. If he wants to train his child for heaven, he must not be content to do things merely because there are the custom of the world. He must not teach and instruct his children in certain ways merely because it is the usual way. He must not allow them to, to read books of a questionable sort merely because everybody else read, read them or let them form habits of a doubtful tendency merely because they are the habits of the day. He must train with an eye on his children's souls. He must not be ashamed to hear his training called narrow-minded and strains. strains. What if it is? The time is short. The fashion of this world passes away. He that has trained his children for heaven rather than for earth, for God rather than for man, is the parent who will be called wise in the end. Praise the Lord. This is a great reminder for, for all of us. Mothers, of course, for fathers as well, but for the mothers, the chief end of your mothering is the salvation of your children. Your ultimate goal is not for your children to be comfortable or to be successful in their careers. Of course, every mother desires these things no, for their children. But that is not the chief end. The ultimate goal of your mothering is to proclaim the gospel to your children. The ultimate purpose of your example and biblical training is so that your children might receive and reflect the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ to others. Amen? 
Paraguay ni Amen. Wa ko na mugos. <laughs> Usahay ka na mo ingon ang pastor og Amen. Di na pasabot nga pa Amen non gyud mo. Iya lang gikuan ang attention nga. You think about that. Pero basically, pag mo ingon og Amen, do you agree with that? <laughs> And I thank the Lord that you agree with that. So as Christians, we should check our hearts, no? So that we will not be like the parents of the world. This is what the parents of the world is desiring for their children. This is not bad in itself, but if it replaces the most important thing for our children, then it's bad. So we should make a difference. No? Education is good, but it is nothing compared to the eternal salvation and sanctification of our children. Amen? I, I'm so privileged to, to, to speak one of our kind of mature women there is a, a church. His desire always for her kind of children. No? Successful na mga children, pero always good. It's nothing. No? Reminding her children, it's nothing. Yeah, it's good. You have been successful, but it's nothing compared no? to the salvation and the sanctification and the glorious intimacy that we will have in our Lord Jesus Christ. So no amount of investment in education can compensate for the failure to raise our children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Now let us, let, let's look at once again, 2 Timothy 3, 14, 15. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. Again, my dear brothers and sisters, the ultimate purpose of mothering is to proclaim the gospel to them. I am convinced that no one is more potential in influencing the children to receive and reflect the gospel than the mothers. Amen ba? Husbands and fathers, importante po kaya itong papila ni. In order for the mothers to do their job as mothers, as they have been called by God, we need to make our home a place where mothers can freely fulfill their God-given calling. As we are commanded, husband, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that they sh she should be holy and without blemish. This is a very important responsibility for the husbands or fathers. Because in order for the mothers or for the, 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 the wives to be effective in their God-given calling, we need to do our part, our calling to disciple our wives. To help them grow in their personal walk with God. To help them enjoy the intimacy that they have with their Lord Jesus Christ. If we are not doing that, kanagingon pa kung sigi tagpabadlong po sa ilaha, sakit ilang ulo per minti, they cannot focus with their God given calling. So, this is very important no? for the husband to understand. And this is for all of us. For children, let us honor our mothers, not only once a year, but every day of our lives. You know, to honor our parents, especially our mothers, this is our mandate. Our ultimate mandate, especially that we are, at the, we are under the authority of our parents. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you and may, you may live long on the earth. What is that? If you serve here in the church and then going back sa inyong balay, pabadlong ka sa balay. No amount of Bible studies can compensate sa ato ang disobedience din na, na murag makabiran na ito ang atong disobedience sa itong parents. This is the ultimate calling for children in their relationship with their parents, especially for the mothers. Honor them because as the Bible says, to honor our father and mother 
is the first commandment with promise that it may be well with you and you may long, live long on the earth. To end this message, I would like to read you a beautiful story. A boat out at sea carrying in it a father and his little daughter. As they were steering for the shore, they were overtaken by a violent storm that threatened to destroy them. The coast was, da uh, the co coast was dan dangerous. The mother lighted a lamp and started up the worn stairway to the attic window. It won't do any good, mother, the son called after her. But the mother went up, put the light in the window, knelt beside it and prayed. Out in the storm, the daughter saw a glimmer of gold on the water's edge. Steer for that, the father said. Slowly but steadily, they came toward the light and at last were anchored in the little sheltered cottage by the harbor. Thank God, cried the mother as she heard their glad voices and came down the stairway with a lamp in her hand. How did you get there? She said. We steered by, the, by mother's light, by mother's light answered the daughter. Although we didn't know what it was out there, ah, thought the boy, a wayward boy, it is time I was steering by my mother's light. And over his sleep, he surrendered himself to God and asked him to guide him over life's rough sea. Months went by and disease smoothed him. He can live long, was the verdict of the doctor. And one stormy night, he lay dying. Do not be afraid for me, he said. As they wept, I shall make the harbor, for I am steering by my mother's light. Mothers and grandmothers, you are a special gift of God. Today, we honor you for all the things that you have done for your children and grandchildren. But allow me to leave these three questions to strengthen your devotion to God by continually serving Him and carrying out your God-given call, the mothering task. What are you giving to your children and grandchildren that are of eternal value? What provisions are you making for them as they journey in this life? And lastly, will the fire of your devotion light their way? Let us bow down our heads in prayer. Father in heaven, we are so grateful to you. We are so thankful for the privilege, O oh God, of hearing your word and receiving, O oh God, an enlightening instruction from you. I know that the message today is not only for mothers, but it is also for us, husbands, fathers, children, Everyone who are here this morning, it is for all of us. And it's my prayer that you are going to give us wisdom. We have different situations, Lord, circumstances in life. And it's my prayer that these principles will be appropriated in each individual circumstance in life. Sa akong mga brothers and sisters who are here, for all of us who are here. May our lives, Lord, will not be a stumbling block to the next generation. But let our lives, O oh God, be a blessing. Something that the, the next generation, O oh God, to follow. Let our lives, O oh God, be counted worthy or faithful in your presence. Remember the song, O oh God, to find us faithful. That's our prayer, O oh God, that our children will look at our lives and see that, that we are living a life consistent to what we profess, O oh God, in the gospel. I pray, Lord, that our lives will really be a motivating factor, you know, in how they live their lives, O oh God, in the future. 
It's not that our lives are powerful, but with your power, O oh God, working through the testimony of your people, we believe that this can be a powerful tool, O oh God, to bring other people's lives to glory. As your word says, we all do these things so that your word will not be blasphemed, that your word will not be malign. Let it be, O oh God, that our lives will not be a stumbling block to our sons and daughters. And for all the people, Ginoong, Aimuhangi, entrusts among lives surrounding us. Those people, Lord, you have entrusted to our care, Bible studies, O oh God, discipleship, mentoring. I pray that our lives will be counted faithful in your presence. We bless, we, we speak forth blessing to the mothers and the grandmothers. And once again, we express our thanksgiving, our gratitude for providing them into our lives, being an instrument, O oh God, of your grace. We honor them, Lord, for your glory and your honor. We honor them not apart from honoring you because these are your children, Lord. Great women who have served in your kingdom to raise the next generation in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Bless them with wisdom. Bless them with good health. Bless them with understanding of your scripture and bless them, O God, with the way they live their lives, O God, consistent to what they profess. Honor and glory be unto you alone. Whatever things that you have done in the past, in the present, and in the future, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. For our uh, announcement, uh, after the service, we will not have our uh, discipleship class. So, ang men and women put nga fellowship, gimove put nato in uh, sa third Sunday. So, it is my prayer na maglook forward gihapon tana ng mga mga event. Praise the Lord. We have brothers and sisters who, who join us in our worship service today. So, may, may I, if I will call the name no, sa ato ang mga bisita who are here for the, the first time, ato silang gihangyo ng mutindog. Asa ang Sagay family from Lubok? Sa, Sakay. Sakay family. Okay, nasa likod. So, we welcome you, ma'am, sir. No? And then, and then, uh, oh, wala diri uh, pero ako pong i, i welcome no ang mama ni uh, Ninong Noli. Kauban po nato karon. And uh, I'm just so blessed, Ate. We praise the Lord. I'm just so blessed no murag bag lang ko ni Tanaw sa video. And I saw Ate <laughs> dito sa, sa video sa news. And the Lord has preserved her life. Praise the Lord. Amen. So kung makakita mo atong itom nga abansa nga nagbitay na dito sa koan sa tulay, so mo to gisakyan ni ate. So the Lord has been good to her and it's so it's a blessing to see her with us this morning. So in behalf of Family Christian Fellowship no, sa atong mga bisita and for all the people who are here uh, joining us in our celebration, in our worship to God. We welcome you. I hope that this would not be the last time we see each other. So, you are always welcome, God. Every Sunday, there is a Family Christian Fellowship. The Lord bless you and let us continue to enjoy God's presence. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters in the Lord. Today is a very special Sunday because we are celebrating God's faithfulness in the lives of our mothers. A godly mother loves the Lord with all her heart, soul, mind, and strength. 
and teaches her children to do the same. Truly, nothing beats the influence of a godly mother. This time, our young people have prepared something special to all mothers who are here with us and to those who are celebrating with us online.
we can see Jesus in the lives of our mothers. Now, may I request all mothers to please come here in front for the giving of the tokens of appreciation we have prepared for all of you. May I request the youth to assist in giving the tokens. Again, requesting all mothers to please come here in front. the day I was born and gripped your little finger we had a special bond just us two I always wanted you near and you'd say may I request I'm the right youth here. to please give the and tokens of appreciation to all mothers You've got the very best hug if I laugh or cry. You've got the perfect voice for singing me a lullaby. You're the best cheerleader, no matter if I win or lose. And when I bring you home a painting of my hand I've traced, you'd think I was Da Vinci by the look on your face. And when I act up, you ask Jesus, May I call do? on Pastor Felix Bernaldez to lead us in so prayer I for our mothers. Follow him cuz I see him in you. Oh. Ooh, ooh. They don't give an award for cleaning up spaghetti or for bedtime stories. Kung hangyoon ang tanan palihog sa pagtindog o uh, once again atong ihadlad nga to sa ginawang atong mga pagdaig para sa atong mga uh, mama pinagi sa atong pagpakpak. <laughs> Clap offering. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Salamat sa ginawa para sa atong mga inahan karon. Uh, let us uh, pray. Our most gracious loving Heavenly Father as we honor and as we appreciate our mothers even as we celebrate there's this mother's day uh, celebration and we thank you so much lord for their lives even for their rule uh, in fulfilling your plan for humanity and thank you oh god for the way you use their lives for our respective families and even lord in the ministry of your church we thank you, O oh God, that their lives are just reflections of your love, your patience, your forgiveness, your mercy, your sacrifice. Thank you so much, Lord, for their calling. And uh, we thank you, Lord, for their, uh, for their lives, Lord, and even their desire to obey you and even to respond to their high calling 
to be a partner of their husbands and even Lord to raise up our children to become um, a person you want, been, you, you want them to be. So Lord, we thank you for all their sacrifices. We thank you, O oh God, for their hard work. And even Lord, uh, we thank you even for their love for you. And Lord, we continue to entrust their lives to you. And as they continue to fulfill your purpose in their lives, we ask you, O oh God, that by your grace, they can fulfill your plan and their purpose for the glory of our Heavenly Father. So Lord, we offer to you back all the glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Again, happy Mother's Day to all mothers. You may now take your seats. Good morning. For uh, more announcement, calling for a short meeting no, for all MAC group leader right after the worship service with uh, Sir Max Orsus. And then, gihangyo uh, pod no ang names of graduates na atong ihatag kang atilin Orsus today uh, before you leave. Para ni siya sa recognition uh, sa last Sunday of the the month. Thank you. Uh, before we will uh, sing our closing song, um, tomorrow will be a election day. No? As we fulfill our civil duty, let us remember that our allegiance should not be on the candidate that we prefer to win. No? A phrase in a song says, Our allegiance and devotions, our heart's desire and all emotions must go to serve the man who died upon the tree. And that is Christ. Do not invest so much emotion into the elections process and result that it not divide the church nor create indifference among our brothers and sisters. Whoever wins, God is always sovereign. Our candidate to reign is Christ and he had already won. Secondly, this is not the city, the province, nor the country that we look, we look forward to. We long for Christ, our King, our glory, and our hope. We long for that place where he already reigns. Let this song be a reminder for our real perspective and expectations in the coming days ahead. Let us sing the song, Christ Our Glory.
able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy to the only God our Savior through Jesus Christ our Lord be glory majesty dominion and authority before all time and now and forever amen, amen. 